Everybody's been saying that you're up to no good. Everyone has been telling me that you got me hood. You're playing it big time. You're feeding me lies. Everyone has been bugging me to sever the ties. But I would never, ever, ever would have believed them. No reason. Sometimes the truth is hard to see. But never, never, ever, ever seem to be over. I saw her. So I'm happy I got freed. Lucky, lucky. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. So today we have a ton of motivation in this video. I did a little bit of everything. The biggest project was tackling the boys room. We really needed to do a huge declutter of their toys, their clothes, everything. And this hit me literally just the other day when I asked them to clean their rooms and we had a huge temper tantrum because it was too much work. Well, I tell my kids all the time, if cleaning up after themselves is too much work, then they have too many things. So we definitely made that our project for the week. Plus, they both just went through a huge growth spur and I had to go through and get rid of all the clothes that didn't fit. But on top of that, I also just have my regular cleaning routines. I decided to share a recipe with you guys and there's just a ton in this video. So, before I talk way too much, as I already am, let's get into today's motivation. Alright, so I had so many questions the other day when my husband was on video and I just thought about it because he popped in in this clip um, about the yard work he does. I shared that in a couple videos back because so many people ask if my husband appreciates all I do or what he does and things like that. So I really wanted to share just kind of our routine of how I handle inside, he handles outside. And we both appreciate each other so much for taking care of our different areas of the house. Um, but I have to say so, so many people mentioned how we need a riding lawnmower. Um, and I just literally died laughing seeing all those comments because normally the comments I get are how he should be helping me more and then I share that video and I'm told that I need to get him a riding lawnmower <laughs> I don't know I found it very funny um, I also need to point out my husband and I have looked into them and he honestly just feels like for the cost of what they run um, he'd rather just get the exercise our yard isn't that that big um, so he doesn't mind just cutting the grass once a week and getting that little bit of extra cardio in. And then after I was all done in our room, I moved straight into the boys' room. And I just started by going through their clothes. So the way I have their dresser set up is everything on the left is Xander's and everything on the right is Bjorn. So I always go through Bjorn's first because for the most part, 
what I do is literally take what doesn't fit Xander and transfer it into Bjorn's drawers. Um, I've said this before that Xander's like totally my quarterback. He's tall, slim, um, just a little mini nothing. He's definitely got his daddy's body type. And then Bjorn is totally my linebacker. Like, he is tall as well. Like, for a four-year-old, he is a large four-year-old. Um, but the hard thing I'm having is for, like, pants, I'm not able to transfer a ton of the pants because when I bought stuff for Xander, I always got slim or skinny jeans because it's the only thing that would stay on his butt. And now with Bjorn, those do not fit. So, we're getting a little bit harder with um, hand-me-downs, but I did just recently go to Old Navy and get Xander a bunch of size 8s because that was the biggest thing, and luckily there are enough sizes um, that fit for Bjorn that I could tra still transfer some over, but you can see this pile right here. This is all stuff that either doesn't fit or all the skinny jeans that doesn't fit Xander and I know will never fit Bjorn just because he is my bigger kid out of the two of them. Other reason that is so so funny and you guys can let me know in the comments below is Xander's like my quiet shy video gaming like kid and he also eats like a horse like this kid can take down an entire frozen pizza on his own and he is a skinny little <laughs> nothing. Bjorn, on the other hand, will spend all day outside on the trampoline, swimming, biking, like he is a crazy person, and it is such a struggle to get him to eat anything, and he is my, I, I don't want to call him big because it's just, he's a solid kid, but I'm sure you get what I mean, and I just find it funny. My skinny mini eats like a horse and would literally play on his computer all day. And then my solid kid runs and is so active and I have to like fight him to get him to get enough calories in during the day. And he is my solid kid. Of course, that's how it works. But the nice thing about that is pretty much like here when it comes to shirts, they wear like the exact same size. So I'm literally just getting rid of everything that is... Um, a size six or smaller because anything bigger than that both of them wear so I can now pretty much send them upstairs to get their clothes and I don't need to worry about Xander coming in in something that's way too small or Bjorn coming down in something that's way too big it does make laundry situation and the kids getting ready in the morning a lot easier And then moving on to toys. Now, I normally do this every um, August anyway. Both the boys have September birthdays. So in August, I usually do a huge pare down of their toys knowing they have birthdays coming up. Um, so I didn't mind doing this a little bit sooner than I normally do. Like I said, they were <laughs> the other day. This closet's clean because I wanted them to straighten it up, but... It was such a struggle that I knew we had to pare down and do this sooner than later. And actually, with Freya coming in September, possibly August, who knows, um, I'm actually glad I got this done now because this is a huge project um, of organizing and decluttering. And who knows, even if Freya is not here in August, I don't know if I would have the energy come August to do this. So... We spent all day. I do make the kids pitch in. Um, I started with Bjorn because, honestly, he's the one that we had the fight with the other day. And I told him if he wouldn't help his brother clean his room, he was going to be made to help me organize and declutter all their toys. I make the boys help anyway, usually, just because this is not easy to have kids help. It can be very overwhelming and very stressful. However, I am a firm believer that kids need to learn these simple skills of 
cleaning, decluttering, and organizing, and to know why we are doing it. Um, and it also makes it less stressful on them if they have a choice. There's a lot of conversation going on here. If they say they want to keep something and I think we should get rid of it, I really make them explain to me why they want to keep it, not just because. Um, and then I'll explain why I think we should get rid of it. And we make that decision together. Um, so this is something that I definitely recommend getting your kids involved in. It can be stressful. I'm not going to tell you it's easy. It literally took all day. This is probably a project that would have taken me a couple hours, but not all day if I did it myself. But it's just so important to get these simple skills for your children. So highly, highly, highly recommend making this a, I do it about twice a year, um, but even if it's once a year, go through your kid's stuff, organize it, clean it, declutter it, and get them involved. And make sure you have a bottle of wine at the end of the night. Obviously being pregnant, I can't have wine, but I will say if you follow me on Instagram, this was the night that I went out and had girls night and it was well deserved after all of this. They had so many books in their closet and we really only have about a handful that we really reach for. So I'm just going through these and grabbing the ones that we reach for and going to put those back into their closet. And then I'm also taking a couple that I know are more babyish that I'll end up putting in Freya's room. But we ended up donating a lot of these just because we don't grab for them. And it, I see no point. I have a hard time getting rid of books. But I finally got to a point where I'm like, okay, we need to downsize because they're just taking up room and space. We don't grab for them. So there really is no reason for us to keep them. And then I had the boys come upstairs and help me downsize their blankets. This is another really hard project because my kids love their blankets, like absolutely love them. But they have not been sleeping on their beds for shoot probably four or five months now they literally take all the blankets off the bed and sleep on the floor every night so it's been getting really overwhelming when i get up in the morning and have to put away all those blankets so i wanted to downsize the blankets we moved the bookshelf that was in the closet out um that way they can put their stuffed animals on they don't have a ton of little stuffed animals and stuff but the ones they have they really really love so I wanted to definitely, definitely make sure that those were put nicely so that they can use them. And then I'm just doing the final cleanup after having them with the decluttering. When it comes to the final cleanup, I do this myself because there's a specific way I want it. And I only actually clean, clean their room, like go in and vacuum, make their beds dust about once a week. The rest of the week, it is up to them. But that once a week, I do it myself to my standards. That way it's really clean and done well. Um, and that way they can see what my standards are when they do it all the other times of the week. So this is just me finishing up, getting this room back to its normal state after the crazy, crazy declutter and organization of it. We ended up getting rid of a whole black garbage bag of clothes, which when you think that they're kids clothes, that's a lot of clothes. Um, two black garbage bags of toys, a black garbage bag of blankets, and a whole box of books. So we got rid of a lot. I forgot to get footage of it 
Also, if you see me put stuff in black garbage bags, it's not because it's going to the trash. It's purely that this is how we will transfer it to the donations place. Um, it's the easiest way is just putting them in these bags and then taking them there. So that is why they're in trash bags. They're not being trashed, but that is how we are taking them from one area yeah, to the next. You know. So this is actually the next day, like I mentioned, with that taking all day the day before, not my normal cleaning routine that happens downstairs got done at all. So I wanted to definitely go in and get the downstairs really, really clean today. And big thing was probably the floors. The floors definitely needed a good uh, vacuuming, a really good mopping um, between the dogs and the kids. And we had rain over the couple days prior the floors were just trash so just going through and doing a really good tidy up of the entire main floor as well as getting dinner prepared which I will be sharing with you that recipe shortly. So I actually shared this cleaner on my Instagram. This is not sponsored. Um, they just sent this to me to my PO box. So I've been trying it out. I will say I've actually really been enjoying it in my um, dishwasher. It works really, really well. And we have very hard water. So normally we get like hard water spots that over time I have to um, vinegar my dishes and stuff just to get rid of those and this took care of it so i'm only sharing it like i said not sponsored they just sent it to me and i am truly enjoying it um and it's just an amazon product so i would definitely go and check it out if you're looking for just something a little bit stronger than your typical tide or because it says you can use it on literally laundry um dishes pretty much every surface in your house
So I'm just grabbing out my slow cooker because I'm doing a slow cooker bourbon chicken. I actually don't like calling it bourbon chicken because it was really, really good, but I wouldn't call it bourbon chicken. Um, I saw this recipe on Tiffany from Beauty and the Beastin's channel and right now with being pregnant there's times I like see something and I just need it and this was one of those recipes so Tiffany this is all your fault um now I'm not making it exactly how she made it I'm kind of tweaking it with stuff we had in the house and changing it up slightly um but all I need is honey soy sauce garlic ketchup red pepper flakes onion chicken and um, some sort of thickening agent. I use a roux, but you can also use cornstarch or something like that. But all I'm doing is adding a cup of honey, and then I will add a cup of soy sauce and half a cup of ketchup. And that will be the main part of the sauce for this recipe. And then I just add about half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and about two tablespoons of garlic. Now when it comes to the garlic and the red pepper flakes, you really can do it to preference. We like a lot of garlic in our house and we like a lot of spice, but not so much the kids. So you could definitely add more red pepper if you want it or less if you really, really don't like the spice. And then after you have that all mixed up, you just set it to the side and then I'm going to dice up an onion as well as the chicken. Um, now I diced the chicken before putting into the slow cooker. You definitely don't have to. I just think the flavors melt together better when you cut up the chicken. Also, I'm using chicken thighs. You can totally use chicken breasts. You do not have to use the thighs. We just prefer chicken thighs, so that's what I have in the house. Um, and then one thing with chicken thighs, they can be a fattier meat, so you can definitely trim off the fat before putting it into the slow cooker. But whenever I put stuff in the slow cooker, I don't worry about it as much, because usually it all renders down. And then obviously when you are dealing with raw meat, don't forget to wash your hands. <laughs> that can be a huge thing. You do not want the cross contamination. But then I just put my crock pot to high. I like to add a bag of peppers and onions to the bottom of my crock pot. And then I add the chicken on top of that. And then the fresh onions on top of that. You do not need to add the onions or the peppers if you don't want, but I really like the flavor of it and I like a lot of them, especially when it's just served over rice. And then you put the sauce over it. In my crock pot, it took about four hours on high. Here's what it looks like at the end. The only spot I really forgot to show you guys was the adding of the roux. I just made a um, roux with flour and butter but you can like i said you can also do a slurry with um cornstarch if you have that in your house just some sort of thickening agent at in the like last 30 minutes of cooking to finish it off and then i clean as i cook or right after i'm done because that way you don't have that huge mess after eating plus this was in the slow cooker so dinner wasn't gonna be ready for a good couple of hours anyway so I wanted just to make sure everything was cleaned up before I moved on to the rest of the house. No reason. Sometimes the truth is hard to see. But never, never, ever, ever seem to be over. I saw her. So I'm happy I got freed. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Uh -oh. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Out of luck and now it's my time. 
So this time of year is definitely the time of year that the dogs shed a ton. Actually, funny, I saw my friend posted something about a poodle slash St. Bernard mix, and that might have to be a thing because then I would get my big St. Bernard dog with the non-shedding of a poodle. But totally off topic, both my dogs shed a ton this time of year. So I go in usually with my dry duster and then the wet duster because honestly, to just wet dust, I would have to use so many cloths to actually get it clean because it would fill up with well, mainly hair, not even so much dust, but hair. Um, so I go in with a dry duster, get as much as I can with that, and then with the wet duster to really polish and clean and get the remaining that the dry duster missed as well. Um, this is not normally what I do, but at least once a week I will go in like this and then try and daily go in with my dry duster to keep up with all the pet hair and everything. Um, but... Dogs, if you have dogs, and especially big, hairy dogs like I do, you understand. It's a daily struggle. It's something where it doesn't matter if you clean daily. There's going to be dog hair, and it's a personal preference. I love my fur babies, and I don't care, and I'm willing to clean up after them. And you just realize it's kind of a way of life. This vacuum has made it a ton easier, though, for the daily, just going around, getting all the dog hair. It picks up a ton. It's lightweight, and I don't need to worry about a cord. You know, it sounds so picky to be like, oh, a cord, but man, once you get a cordless vacuum, it really, really does make a huge difference of how much you're willing to just grab it because you don't need to worry about that darn cord getting in your way. So if you're curious where the kids are and where Bobby is, so Bobby is currently still working from home, actually only until the 7th. I don't know what day of the week that is. I'll have to look. But he just got word that he'll be going back to work on July 7th. Um, and normally I tackle the inside right around after lunch because that's usually when the kids are outside playing. At this point they were swimming. So it allows me to get it all done just without the constant mom, mom, mom. <laughs> and I know you understand what I'm saying. So I will try and tackle a lot of the house when they're outside playing and swimming, um, usually about an hour, and then I'll head out there with them to get stuff done. But I like, it's kind of like the new nap time. Neither of my kids takes naps anymore. So after lunch, I send them outside and I can take that 30 minutes to an hour and power clean the downstairs. All right, I just wanted to share this shot to give you an idea of how much fur is in my house. Now, I empty this every single time I vacuum, and every single time I vacuum, it is full of dog hair. But I love that I can clean the filters and empty this so easily so that every time I'm using it, it does really, really well. Um, and like I said, the floors were a little bit rough because we were having some stormy weather so between the dogs coming in and out and stuff like that i really needed to mop them really good i have a shark steam mop which i love and i usually use 
But if the floors are really dirty like today, I like to still use my spin mop just because I feel like I can scrub better with this. Um, and then I just put on my mop socks, which I like these because if I go over a wet spot, I'm not leaving footprints. But also those really tough areas, I can scrub with my foot if I need to, which there's definitely times you get those areas that even the mop's not doing. So normally you'd have to get on like your hands and knees to scrub them, which no one likes scrubbing floors on their hands and knees. And instead I can just use my toes with my little mop socks. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you join me and my YouTube family. Also, if you guys need even more motivation, check out one of these videos on the side. You're sure to love them. But until next time, bye.